Hello everyone, welcome to Botany Option Channel for UPSC examination. In this video, we are going to see the structure and function of parangametous tissue. As you know, the plant anatomy forms an important part of the every syllabus relating with the botany. There are three types of the simple permanent tissue in the plant kingdom that is parenchyma, polenchyma, and sclerenchyma. In this video, we will focus on the structure and function of the parangametous tissue. So before starting the video, I request you to join the telegram channel of the same name that is the botany optional for UPC examination. There we regularly upload the links of these videos plus the PDF relating with the study material of botany so that you will not miss any literature relating with the botany subject. All right. So let us see the structure and function of parenchyma. Now, first of all, what is parenchyma? Now, it is an living tissue which consists of group of isodimetric cell. The first thing you should know about the parenchyma that it is an living tissue. There, there are many comparative differences between parenchyma, sclerenchyma and chorenchyma. One of them is a, whether the tissue is living or dead. So the parenchyma is a living tissue and it consists of the group of isodimetric cells. As you can observe in this picture, these are the parenchymatous cells and it, can cl it clearly shows that all these cells are isodimetric in nature. So the parenchymatous cells are living cells plus they are made up of the isodimetric cells that is all cells nearly has the same size and shape. All right. The very particular thing about the parenchymatous tissue is that they are the primitive tissue. The parenchyma is a simple and primitive tissue from which the other tissues have evolved and therefore this tissue is called as the fundamental tissue. That is the parenchymatous tissues are the primitive tissues that is this tissue is first formed in the plant kingdom during the evolution and from this parenchyma the other plant tissue such as chlorenchyma, sclerenchyma or polenchyma all are formed. That is why the parenchymatous tissue are considered as a primitive tissue because it originated first in the plant kingdom and from this parenchymatous tissue the other tissues have originated and this is the very basic reason why this tissue is called as the fundamental tissue. So you should carefully remember that the parenchymatous tissue is famously called as the fundamental tissue. This is quite important from the MCQ examinations point of view that the question often asks that which of the following simple permanent tissue is also called as the fundamental tissue. So the answer is parenchymatous tissue. So parenchymatous tissue is considered as a primitive tissue because from this tissue all other tissues have evolved and that is the very basic reason why this tissue is also called as the fundamental tissue. All right. Now let's consider the shape of the parenchyma cells. Now, the cells of the parenchyma are maybe oval or circular in shape. That is you can observe in this picture the oval or nearly circular shape of the parenchymatous tissue is there. So while writing down about the parenchyma, if you mentioning the shape, you should mention the words like oval or circular. And they are loosely arranged with intercellular spaces. That is, in majority of the cases, these parenchymatous cells are very loosely arranged. They are not compact, but they are loosely arranged. And that is why they show the intercellular spaces between them. That is, the parenchymatous cells, due to their loose arrangement, shows the intercellular spaces between them all right so in the shape you should mention the two words that is oval and circular plus you should mention that all these cells are loosely arranged that is parenchymatous tissue when, wherever they are they are the loosely arranged and that is why they shows the presence of intercellular spaces between them now how are the cells of parenchymatous tissue see the cells of parenchyma contains the cytoplasm vacuoles and nucleus all these three components are present in the parenchymatous cells. That is, they contain the cytoplasm plus vacuole plus nucleus. This is quite important as you may think that all these kinds of the components are always present in the cell. But this is not the case because the other comparative tissue like chlorenchyma and sclerenchyma lack certain features in this. And that is why while writing down answer about the parenchymatous tissue, you should remember that the parenchymatous tissue contains the cytoplasm vacuole as well as the nucleus all right now let us consider the cell wall of a parenchyma the cell wall of a parenchyma cells are thin then it is made up of the cellulose and pectin that is the cell wall you can consider the every cell in the plant cell has the cell wall and the parenchyma cells are no exception these are parenchyma cells which has the cell wall is thin in nature it is thin in nature plus it is made up of the cellulose plus pectins so the cell walls in the parenchyma 
are thin in nature plus they are made up of cellulose and pectins now let us focus on the distribution of the parenchyma in the plants now in almost all parts of the plant this parenchymatous tissue find its distribution that is the parenchyma cells you will find in almost all parts of the plant body such as the edible roots stem fruits and seeds are mainly made up of the parenchyma that is all the edible roots which are present in the plant kingdom are mostly made up of the parenchymatous cells plus the majority of the part of the fruits is also made up of the parenchyma plus the seeds and the stem also contains the parenchymatous tissue so you should remember that parenchymatous tissue is found in almost all parts of the plant and you, you should mention especially the edible roots stem fruit and seeds are mainly contain the parenchymatous tissue all right now internally when we talk internally how the parenchymatous tissues are distributed internally it is also found in the epidermis that is majority of the cases the epidermal cells are the parenchymatous cells then the cortex teeth mesophyll cells of the leaves and also xylem and phloem are made up of the parenchymatous cells as you know when we talk about the anatomy the majority of time you will hear these words that is epidermis cortex teeth mesophyll cells xylem and phloem and the parenchyma shows the presence in all of them that is why the parenchymatous cells are found throughout the plant body they are found in the epidermal cells also in cortex cells also in a pith cells plus in a mesophyll cells of the leaves plus this xylem and phloem also shows the presence of parenchymatous cells actually the four main components from which this xylem is made one of them is the xylem parenchyma right so internally also the parenchymatous cells are found throughout the plant body now let's learn about the functions of parenchyma now the main function of the parenchyma is the storage of food as we have discussed in the last slide that the majority of the edible roots are made up of the parenchyma cells plus all the fruits find the presence of this parenchymatous tissue so the main function of the parenchyma tissue is the storage of food that is the food is storage in the parenchymatous tissue this is the main function of the parenchyma in the process of photosynthesis plant prepare their own food using the sunlight co2 and water and this photosynthetic product is stored in the edible roots plus the fruits and these are fruits and edible roots are mainly made up of the parenchymatous tissue that that is why it is considered as the main function of the parenchymatous tissue that is the storage of food when a zero fights the parenchyma performs this special function that it helps in the storage of water that is the parenchymatous tissue which are present in the zero fights all these tissues are used to store the water because as you know in a xerophytic habitat there is a scarcity of water and water is of prime importance and xerophytic plants often tends to store the water and the storage of this water is takes place in the parenchymatous cells so in a xerophyte parenchyma plays an important role in the storing of water as the third function of the parenchyma the parenchyma with abundant chloroplast is called as chlorenchyma and the function of this chlorenchyma is the photosynthesis now when these are parenchyma these are simple parenchyma contains the chloroplast that is if the parenchymatous cells you can see here if these are parenchymatous cells contains the chloroplast organelle then this parenchyma is called as the chlorenchyma then in such a condition this chlorenchyma performs the function of photosynthesis so the parenchyma tissue is also involved in the photosynthesis process just we have to remember that when the parenchyma contains the chloroplast then such a tissue is called as the chlorenchyma this is a very important word that is chlorenchyma when the parenchyma contains the chloroplast then it is called chlorenchyma and the function of chlorenchyma is the photosynthesis so you can say that the parenchyma cells are directly involved in the photosynthesis all right now the next function of the parenchyma is in the aquatic plants that is the intercellular spaces between the parenchyma cells are very large and then it is called as the parenchyma again this is a very important term which is used in the aquatic plants you can see this picture this is an ts of an aquatic plant in which there are large intercellular spaces between the parenchymatous tissues now these large intercellular spaces are filled with the air and and it helps the plant to float in the water that is these intercellular spaces which are which are very large in the aquatic plants is filled with the air and due to this air it 
works like an air bag and the plants float on the water. Now, these large intracellular spaces are basically created by the parenchyma. And when parenchyma creates such a large intracellular spaces, then it is called as the arenchyma. You should remember carefully this term. Arenchyma, when the parenchymatous tissue shows the large intracellular spaces between them, then this tissue is called as the arenchyma. And the function of this arenchyma is to store the air. And when this arenchyma stores the air, the plants tends to float in the water. And this is the very, very important function performed by the parenchyma in the aquatic plants because the aquatic plants has the priority to float on the water and that is why they contain the arenchyma which is nothing but the parenchyma with the large intercellular spaces all right now when the parenchyma have the fiber like elongated cells with thick walls then it is called prosenchyma so again this is a new term that is the prosenchyma which is again an parenchyma tissue which has the fiber like elongated cells with thick cell walls and that is why this parenchyma is known as the prosenchyma. These prosenchyma provide rigidity and strength to the plants. When the parenchymatous tissue shows the presence of fiber like elongated cells which have the thick cell walls then such a cells then such a tissue is called as the prosenchyma and this prosenchyma provides rigidity plus strength to the plants. So again, this is an important function which is assigned to the parenchyma, all right? Now, in some cases, the parenchyma is cutinized, such as the cells of epidermis of stem and leaf, and then it provides the protection. You can answer here, these are, these are the parenchymatous tissues, and above it, we have the layer of cuticle. That is, these cells are cutinized parenchymatous cells. In such a case, when the parenchyma is cutinized, it provides protection. So, the protection function is also assigned to the parenchymatous tissue. Now, as we have discussed, the parenchyma present in the xylem and phloem as well. That is why it also helps in the conduction of water and food material. So, apart from the previous function, there is also parenchymatous role in the conduction of water and the food material throughout the plant body. All right. So, this is all about the parenchymatous tissue. I hope you like this lecture. Please like the video. Please share this video with your friend who are studying the botany. And if you have any doubt or question, please make sure to comment in the comment box. And if you haven't subscribed to the Botany Option channel yet, please subscribe to the Botany Option channel for UPSC examination. Again, thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next one.